imagines the Lakota winter camp model of problem solving and community building in today's world by examining the deeper cultural roots of the way that Ocheti Shakoin people do things and how we interact with the world around us. And so we wanted to invite Chuck and his artist buddy to talk through these different pra art practices um, and also to give Martha an opportunity to practice talking about her art and so um, we're actually waiting for Martha to join us but we wanted to get started with the conversation so I will pass it to you Chuck to introduce yourself and if you just want to maybe give us a little uh, introduction about yourself. Okay some of you may know me I'm Dwayne Wilcox uh, most, mostly everybody calls me Chuck uh, my sisters call me Chucky, and um, even though I'm almost 70 years old now. But anyway, uh, I've been doing art for like uh, 40, 40 some years, and I think 30, over, a little over 30 professionally. So this is my first, uh, my first intern that I've worked with. So, and she's 19. She's uh, going to be going to art school in uh, fall of next year. So. Or oh, fall of this year, sorry. But um, she mostly worked with technology, so on an iPad with a little scroll, scroll uh, wand and everything. So a lot of her work has not, not uh, developed into uh, materialized into uh, what we know as a medium of you know paper or canvas or um, you know a lot of the things. So basically, what I've been teaching her is some of the techniques that I used on some of the work that I've done in the past. And uh, just to get her familiarized with the, the uh, material and how it flows and everything and what kind of mediums to use on it. So I think that uh, it's important if you're a digital artist to find a, a way to get, get your hands actually dirty. Uh, it, it's... Uh, Technology kind of changes things. You could keep it, uh, you could still keep your work traditionally cultural with the, uh, I think Martha's here. Yeah, she is. She just walked in right on. So <clears throat> basically uh, we were working on a lot of stuff that just happened to do with materials that uh, she wasn't, un she was unfamiliar with. So the things that she's most familiar with is the, uh, is the iPad and the, that, that, I, I don't know the name of the platform she uses on that, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll let her sit down. And I wish I had a higher chair here for her, but I guess we could uh, come and have a seat. And uh, hey, everybody, this is Martha, bad soldier, bad warrior, bad warrior. Mm -hmm. I, I keep getting her name wrong because uh, we just met like um, two months ago, so we're still getting familiar with each other. Mm -hmm. So even even that little uh, hiccup that I gave her the wrong name, <laughs> I'm kind of uh, putting a camera and, a, and voice on you. It's kind of scary. So oh, be brought up there, so we're going to be at the same height. <laughs> It's good to see some of the old familiar faces on your see Bill there. How you doing, Bill? <laughs> Haven't seen Bill in a long time. Good old, good old collector and very knowledgeable person of our mm. of our indigenous work. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Martha, and I'll let her talk, talk a little bit about her, uh, some of her, uh, uh, the way she does her art. Uh, and trying to, I guess, trying to learn some of the ways that we do it too. So I'll I'll turn it over to you, Martha. Just tell them a little bit about what you do with you with your tablet and things. Uh, well, I've been working digitally on Procreate for a while now, a few years. I used to work more, um, obviously, because I didn't have an iPad on my uh, just notebooks and stuff. So it's been really cool getting to get back into traditional like painting and um just uh, more traditional arts with the uh, with what Dwayne's been showing me so yeah I feel like my horizons are broadening slowly I 
Martha, I'll ask a question. Um, how did you first get interested in art? And what were some of the first things you started creating? Um, I've been drawing since I was as far back as I can remember. But I remember just drawing like the worst girls you've ever seen just in like a dress. And I draw that over and over again with different dresses. Um, just, and it was just really bad. But yeah, that was when I was really young and I just kept going and just drew whatever. I've been drawing mainly people for um, my whole life, but yeah, I've been getting more into animals and buildings and yeah. And then how did you come to do your internship with uh, Dwayne? How do, I, don't, I actually don't know how that all came about. Is this through a program or how did you all meet? Uh, uh, no. Yeah. I want, wanted to get into art school. So my mom, while I've been studying to do that, my mom was like, you should probably study under some galleries, you know, while we're studying to get you into art school. So she first introduced me to um, Joe Pulliam at uh, to Swatcha Gallery last year. And I worked for him with, for him a couple months and then that ended so she was like well the next option would be race and magpie they're really good so essentially like she kind of pushed me to um ask peter if I, i'm like hey can i get an internship here for however many months and then he introduced me to Dwayne. so it was basically my mom <laughs> i i love our parents ball and telling us to do things Mm -hmm. um, but maybe if you all want to share some of the stuff that you've been working on, I think that would be really cool. Do you have any of the pictures, Minnie, that uh, we had? Uh, yeah. I, think, I only emailed you a couple. I should have got some more to you, but we never really took photographs as we went. Yeah, I can give photographs of the one stuff I have. Well, do you, I, she, could, she could email you some, I guess. Yeah, you also... Um, I will hold on. Let me pull up some of the ones that you sent me. Because I know you had the hat. Okay, let me share my screen. So I know we have this one, right? That you all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a. Uh... Uh, kind of an art form that I used to do uh, before I even really started doing art. So uh, there's probably none of these actually in any collections anywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> these are uh, experimental art that I did like in the early 80s. And uh, I thought it was important for her to kind of uh, learn uh, that um, the canvas, how the tech, how your brush and and paint uh, works on canvas, because it's kind of a skill, and there's so many lines in this, so it's a good uh, it's a good um, exercise to keep your paint straight and square and everything, make all your little triangles and everything. It's not really a cubist in it, but it kind of has that esque thing to it. But uh, I always liked this when I was younger because uh, I didn't have a lot of paint. So it was easy to use a little at a time. And uh, it was economic based style of art that I did. So I thought it was kind of important to start with this kind of process. And these were, uh, I think they're 11 by 14 size. Uh, and, um, and it's a process where you put down the uh, acrylic paint and then after you uh, put your acrylic down, you do a hard line over your lines with a darker color, you know, in black, basically. And then you use a, a watercolor black wash over it. And then you, it's kind of like putting soot over it. And then you wipe out the, uh, uh, the color. And it changes the uh, color a little bit of the value of the color. So... It's kind of kind of a neat process, but once it's done, you have to put a clear coat on it, so because that uh, watercolor will activate if they ever get damp or wet. So it's kind of a neat little process, and I've uh, done those a lot, a lot so many years ago. 
And I the the painting behind us right here is is also another process. I wanted her to use some of the same uh, sentiment with that only thing at a larger scale. This is 48 by 30, 46 by 38. So uh, I kind of wanted her to get the feel of doing a piece that's a little bit uh, bigger than your normal tablet size and to see how, you know, the venture of how you do that. And I, I, I like it, it's pretty cool. And if you can't see it very good, it's an owl. And there's a little mouse down here <laughs> at the bottom, and his talons are right here. Yeah, but it's it's pretty cool to see in person. Of course, you know, live it, looking at it on the screen isn't really the the value that uh, I would place on it. And we first started, we did feathers. Uh, I have a hat here. Might as well. These are uh, these feathers is uh, the first thing I showed her how to do with the uh, the imitation quill work that I do. Uh, th this is mine. She, I, you have a picture of the one she did. Not actually, the one that she did has her artwork on it. So we started basically from the, from the uh, the beginning to the end, from the just a white shell to applying everything and making all the wraps and everything. And uh, this is one of her actual in, uh, art pieces, two of her actual art pieces that she done on her iPad. And it, it came out really good. I mean, it's, it's pretty colorful. You can see the cowgirl on the top kind of relaxing there. Uh, we we kind of implemented that around the brim too. And if you look at the feathers, it's it's an older woman. It's an older woman speaking to a younger woman. If you if you've seen the picture more clearly, you could see that the the lady person on the left had more traditional clothing on, and the um, the person on the right had more contemporary clothing on. <laughs> but the story is in the uh, picture behind it that. Uh, that 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 was the feathers that that was put on, but there's a story base. Person listening to an elder, I guess that that would be best, right, Martha? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll let her tell you a little bit more about it. I mean, uh, uh. well, uh, yeah. I just wanted to show that because I feel like we all should listen more to the people, traditional people, but also um, not. It's like you can still be modern with having traditional kind of values and like keeping that, you know, your ways. And the cowgirl relaxing is based off my little sister who actually does do rodeo. I drew her for that. Awesome. I think the hat is really cool. Um what what was the most challenging part, Martha, from going from like drawing on an iPad to then working with like physical material? There's a lot more like cheats in iPad, like not cheats, but like shortcuts. There's it's a lot more forgiving than a lot of you know physical stuff, especially like from a hat, three D. So it was cool to like um, make the wraps and stuff. That was much more like, that was probably very relaxing actually. It was fun to just kind of turn my mind off. And But um, yeah, all the steps, it was a lot more intricate. A lot of the uh, work we've done together, I try to connect her with all the artists in the area that I know that can uh, help with any kind of medium. So we went to Roger Brewer studio and we took a, a mono print class uh, and that was fun. Uh, Roger's always a, a good instructor when it comes to artwork. So we both went up there and every time I, I I've taken his class before, but I 
every time I I try to do one of his pieces of monoprint, they they look like Roger's pieces. So <laughs> I don't know how to unmake them not look like Roger's were. So I that's why I probably stayed away from that. But we're gonna try that again. And just uh, last week, she's been working with Doug and Mike Tubles on some screen printing, some silk screen printing. And uh, we have some other stuff lined up, some actual cool work, on, and learn how to do some actual cool work. We have that lined up in the future, too. So uh, it's uh, it's not just my uh, my work that I want her to understand. It, it's There's a whole bunch of artists in our area that are really willing to help. So it's, um, I just wish that I had this at the beginning of my my career because uh, there's so many people to exploit, <laughs> to, 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 to weigh in on what's what, what art is today. You know, there's so many, so many genres that you can go, uh, especially in, you know, in the, uh, like two dimensional, and uh, I I love two two dimensional work, uh, but I do a little bit of three dimensional. But I wanted her to know that feeling of seeing three dimensional. In the future, we're going to try to do some sculpting on some styrofoam. I I need to make another horse, uh, a stick horse, basically. Uh, some of you may have seen that with that Ochete Shako. Uh, I want to, I have an exhibit coming up next year. So hopefully I could work on some of that stuff while Martha's here and she could see kind of the, the process of how uh, to shape down styrofoam, put a coating on it that, that makes it hard enough to where you could work with it and, um, and be able to develop it into a, what, what, what you're trying to see in your third dimension eye. I appreciate that you all have taken field trips to learn different other art practices. Um, and if you, if anyone in the Zoom room, and just a reminder, if anyone in the Zoom room or on Facebook has questions, you can leave, drop them in the chat. Uh, and we just, I really appreciate you both taking the time. I know this is probably very overwhelming for you, Martha, but I thought this would be a good practice to start talking about your art, especially as you're going into art school um, in the fall. Um, Chuck, do you have what have you learned about mentoring and being a part of this process? It's always that way. Uh, when you hang around young people, you forget that you're 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 not young anymore. <laughs> you kind of you feel uh you you feel at the same level. It makes you feel um, a little bit more spirited and uh it, and having to describe your work a little bit more in detail of why you did this process or that process. Usually when you work and you don't really, you know, have anybody to bounce that off of, you just go with it. But when uh, you're trying to uh, orient somebody to to what you're doing, it, the, uh, the process is kind of like uh, you never have spoke of it out loud. So it's kind of kind of odd that you have to, you know, say it. But just the materials and the mediums and everything. I'm not a I'm not an expert. I'll be the first one to tell everybody that. Uh, mostly, I've just been that. I was I started out as a very poor artist, so everything was in crayon or pencil or ink. So it was the cheapest materials that you could uh, you could come you could uh, you know get to. But um, I always thought if you can't do it with cheap materials, you ain't going to be able to do it with expensive materials. So that's, you know, that's just my drift as an old old guy saying, uh, you know, you should be able to make art out of anything and, and uh, make it happen. Awesome. I like that. Uh, if you can't make it out of cheap materials, how are you going to make it out of more expensive yeah. stuff? Um, what do you what in exploring these different art forms and I know you've been doing a lot of um work with paper how how was it to kind of teach painting again or these different techniques um and what are you hoping to both of you to like learn more about as the internship progresses yesterday we did uh we did some uh, 
Yesterday we did some uh, some rolling pin art. <laughs> it's a uh, yeah. It's a uh, how I is this this is the style of artwork. I hate showing just people artwork, but this is what I was teaching Martha yesterday. We did uh, these ladies with the blankets, uh, and it's done with the rolling pin. So basically, you make three lines. Uh, your center line is the dress color. The outside line is the blanket. So what you do is you take the rolling pin after you laid out your lines and you roll it down the paper. And uh, depending on how fat you want it, you press harder if you want a wide woman or, <laughs> or a com more comfortable blanket. Let's call it that. A more comfortable blanket. And then I, I, I teach the little candlelight head for for the the face and and the braids sometimes you put full hair on it but these are the things that I went into the classrooms in, in for grades from about six to ninth graders so they could actually create a piece of art kind of uh based on my my teaching I guess as something simple and the the paint is only like a I, when I first started they were fifty cents a, a bottle and they were the cheap craft paints you buy at Walmart or anywhere and uh, you can make something pretty out of it and uh, elongate it it kind of abstract it a little bit and uh, in mixing wet paint together you never know what you're going to get especially if you're using cold and hot colors because they'll blend as you're as they mix together. It's, so it's kind of uh, like looking at clouds. Sometimes you get some stuff in there that you didn't plan on. So it, it's kind of a fun process. It doesn't take long to learn. It's a good 20 minutes of, uh, but it's a Teflon rolling pin that you use for dough that you just use the Teflon rolling pin because it's easy to clean up. I imagine you could use wood or glass or marble or whatever kind of rolling pin, but it's it's easy to clean up. It's kind of a messy process once you roll it, but you you'll get some artwork out of there that that's enjoyable. Awesome. I I I enjoy hearing about the different text techniques that you're trying. Uh, Martha, which ones have you enjoyed so far in in your learning? Are they all kind of your favorite? Um, I think. I like them all in different ways, but I think just being able to try so many new different things with um, more artists and it's just like really awesome because there's only so much you can do uh, by yourself trying out um, things just on your iPad. So getting to work with like actual real materials like, like the rolling pin was much more, it was like freeing kind of because you roll the pin and it kind of just ends up where it ends up. You kind of like work with what you got. There's no deleting it um, like you can on an iPad. And with like the hats, you you cut out the feathers and you get to just work with a lot more tools, which I feel like gets my brain working a lot more, which is fun. Yeah, I'm super excited to see all the like like getting to work with quill work. I've never done that before. So that's what it really sounds exciting. And I'm, I didn't know what screen printing was before I went to go work with them. So you can see all the um, different processes and types of art is just amazing. We also got, uh, got her into a six week art drawing class at the Dolphine Arts, uh, one, a two-hour class once a week. I think it was last night, wasn't it? Tuesdays? Tuesdays, which yeah. was two days ago. Oh, oh did you? Mm -hmm. Did you make it? Yeah, of course okay. I did. Okay, so I'll have to let her tell you about what kind of things that, that they're doing at that uh, down there, because I, I, I don't know. Yeah, we're doing a lot of still life, working with lighting and charcoals, which is it's like a kind of like a refresher for me and getting to like, I don't draw still life that much. This has been a really good exercise to reintroduce me to like lighting and um, how the shapes look um, just sitting there. And she does uh, more exercises, but yeah, that's been really cool. 
And I, I have a question about for both of you, um, Martha, I know you're still new and developing ideas, but um, maybe Chuck, you can share first about how you decide on a subject matter, like wh what inspires you to create what you create for your different pieces? <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I work my brain works like everybody else's. I think we had lead paint when I was a kid on our <laughs> pencils in school. So uh, recently I've been doing uh, uh, Buffaloes on Vacation. And you know, what it is is uh, people always go on vacation to see buffaloes. So I kind of reversed that role and uh, I, I allowed the, uh, the buffaloes to kind of take more kind of less of a human aspect about relaxing uh i i have some pictures i i hate to hold them up to the camera monitor that's kind of uh, but i've never i don't have pictures of them because i'm doing an exhibit next year at, in uh, pueblo colorado at the sangre de cristo art center in january so uh those those pictures are, are specifically set for a genre of uh exhibit that i'm working on so uh, that's why I don't have, you know, been putting up them. I, I think I put one up on Instagram. And it's basically a buffalo on the beach sitting there with a um, margarita and a cigar with sunglasses and earbuds in listening to music and uh, normal tourist attire, flip flops, shorts and a Hawaiian shirt. So, you know, um like I said, my my process of how I work is kind of backwards. I think I try to find the juxtaposition or the irony of something, uh, looking at it at a different perspective, you know, the animalized to the humanized, I guess. Um, that's kind of what I wanted to do with this show in is kind of a, a playful thing that somebody could look at and enjoy and understand that, that, that you know, it's... Uh, yeah, it is. It's not mockery or anything. It's just we all deserve a break. <laughs> I guess we're we have some Facebook comments that people are excited to see buffaloes on vacation. Uh, <laughs> well, they shouldn't be drinking alcohol. I think those are all virgin daiquiris and stuff. That they have. <laughs> virgin margaritas. Yeah, um, <laughs> I appreciate that. What about you, Martha? What some of the, um, I really enjoy the image of the cowgirl. You said that was based on your sister. Um, what other types of images or subjects do you like to draw or create? Um, well, I don't know. I feel like that's just the fun part of being an artist. You, if you want to see something, you can just make it, but uh, some of my art's based off of real things like my sister or moments um, like the one with the elder talking. It's when at family gatherings, me and my sisters just kind of like to just listen to the elders talk amongst each other and to us telling us stories. But um, other things, I don't I feel like it just pops, my head, pops into my head. I'd be like, oh, that'd be cool to see. And then I, you could just draw that. Um, I like to do animals in different situations because like Dwayne said it's nice to think it's good it's interesting to think from the animal's perspective because they're not um, so much different than us but yeah I just feel like it just it's not a theme it just there's just a lot of different things that I like to draw that's like oh that'd be cool to see and then I can try and uh what for martha what uh goals do you have with school and what are you hoping to do beyond beyond this internship beyond this internship well i'm hoping to go to art school and i don't know quite which field of art i want to go into but i do know i want to make a living and build my life around art in some way. So hoping to, through this internship, seeing how different people incorporate art into their lives and how they make, um, some make money off their art 
and through going to school, I want to see all the different ways I can do that and find my own way. And then Chuck, as Martha's mentor, um, what do you hope she continues to explore, or expand on, and what do you hope to see that she does? You know, that's the thing is, it's exciting to be with somebody that um, has a concept of what they do at the age that they're at. I know she's a very young person, and uh, it, I kind of envy that because uh, that's the best part of my career is that unknowing future was uh, the beginning of it because not uh it was exciting to to have that uh that kind of missing uh element of where you're going because I didn't start out thinking well I'm going to do this and this and this I just ended up uh, on this uh path that was uh kind of a circle of uh markets and uh I never really paid into much uh, attention to where it was going because uh, I had to get ready for the next show so uh, at, at, in between all that it was nice to have uh, organizations or meeting collectors it, it I, I got introduced to this world outside of my own little bubble that uh, was very interesting and I met a lot of wonderful people that liked the stuff that I liked you know had that same same uh, appreciation for it and working with Martha kind of makes me feel uh, that uh, that same way you know that uh, the people who influenced me some of them aren't aren't here anymore you know and I never really gave them a big thank you for anything of you know we were friends or whatever I never really gave them a big thank you or made a big you know mess out of trying to tell them that uh, the things that they they allowed me to have uh, without knowing it, I guess, but uh, just that whole realm of uh, life, it, it, it completed a lot of things in me that uh, that I never felt like was missing anymore after a certain time in the in the business world of it. I don't like the business world of it. I do like the creation part of it all. the The business part is the you know the the, the uh, secondary thing, but. Uh, I know a lot of good business artists, uh, people who do art, and uh, and then I know a lot of artists who are better at business that than art. <laughs> I, I don't want to say anything bad about their art, but that's what I'm saying. You know, it's like uh, that's the way it is. You know, some people are better business artists than they are artists. I, you know, I'm not going to name names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not asking you to name names. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but maybe what advice would you have for um, for young artists, right? Who are trying to, to like Martha, who are who are getting into the business aspect, but still want to focus on art, art, centering their artistic practices. What advice would you have for them? It's a lifelong venture it, it's not uh there's no deadline on the uh on the experience it's it's for me i, I don't i don't ever say that I, i'm going to retire and not do art anymore that's i just can't do that i don't know you know it's it's a lifelong love of that that uh, appreciation of beautiful things you know uh, that uh it's uh it's real personal for a lot of us that do it you know that uh it's a fulfillment that you really can't buy you know it's something that it um that you work for for a very long time and uh it's uh it's kind of like music you know you might get one hit wonder but you got to play that song the rest of your days <laughs> but it, I think it would be exciting to be in the, you know, the museum part of it. I think it would be exciting to be, you know, just just to be a curator. Uh, you know, there's so many ways of, of of being involved in this stuff that makes uh, makes me smile. I've known a lot of really wonderful curators uh, all over the country, uh, collectors. Uh, you know, uh, those those people are your uh, are your uh, are your fans as well as you are fans of their collections, you know, uh, 
it it, it kind of it just keeps uh, it just keeps paying it forward for you. Thank you. I think that's really important to that this is a a lifelong journey and a lifelong experience and that, that there are different aspects of art practices that you can stay engaged with. So uh, are there, I just, are there any questions from our Zoom audience or anyone on Facebook that has any burning insight? Oh, okay. I have, we have a question from Facebook and it asks, uh, are there any advice for artists trying to make a living and valuing their work and balancing that with giving back to community through volunteer or donated work? So balancing, right, balance, as an artist, balancing living and making your art, but also ways to give back to the community. Giving back to the community is what I'm doing right now with Martha. I mean, uh, anybody that comes to you that desires the, or has that passion to do to do work, uh, there's always space available somewhere that you could go in and pass on some of your experience or techniques to another artist. They don't have to pay for it. I mean, you shouldn't have to sell this. A lot of the stuff came to me by trial and error or somebody showed me how to do it without asking me for money for it, you know, uh, for the experience. So I think sharing your, um, your, your, uh, your, your style or something with somebody is very much culturally accepted. That's how we do it. You know, that we give back to the community we come from, regardless if we have an organization helping us, Somebody comes to you and says, my daughter wants to draw, or my son wants to draw, or I want to draw. You know, you don't need to have a big fancy room or anything or a studio. You can do it at your kitchen table. Uh, it's a good way to share a human experience, you know, over uh, over a cup of tea and some drawings. You know, that it's um, it's the way we do it. Awesome. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, Martha, what are you, what are you hoping to, uh, experience? Like, I know you're very new to the art practice and art world, but like, what are, aside from school, like, what are some experiences you're hoping to, to have as an artist and, um, what, what are you most excited about? Um. I'm excited about the quill work. That's um, probably going to happen. Uh, yeah, I think because a lot of the artists he's showing me to do a lot of um, Native art in their own way, which um, is very exciting to me to see how people express their culture in their art in different ways, which gives me an idea of what I can do with like my art um, to express my own culture and how I want to uh, show that to people. Um, and yeah, just like meeting new, meeting artists and because I didn't get to meet a lot of artists um, growing up or not, there was a lot of artistic people in my family. My mom was one for sure and my sisters have their own artistic styles, but people who like are artists who do art for a living is really exciting to meet and um, yeah. So just broadening my world and is really uh, fun. I really appreciate that you mentioned balancing, you know, being a native artist and expressing our cultural livelihood in different formats and different ways um and maybe chuck can you give us some insight about like what that has been like from you know when you started to now like how have you seen a shift are there different ways that people have um that have excited you about the way they've expressed cultural 
like ideas through their art practices that may not have be the same as you or um, other ways that you're excited about artists that are expressing, you know, Ochetti Shaco in life ways, but maybe not in a stereotype or in a trope. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's been a lot of, a lot of trial and error for me. Uh, when I first started doing those ledger drawings, uh, they really, you know, back in the nineties, they really wasn't, uh, a lot of us, I mean, there was probably six of us that actually did them, and it wasn't uh, even at markets, uh, native markets, they didn't have a category for it. So it was basically put into uh, like a studio drawing or landscape, or, you know, anything in pencil and ink. So, but the, the, um, the, the imagery uh, was more uh, of a 18th uh 18th century feel to it <laughs> it, it uh, was um very uh romanticized past of our our warriors and uh things like that and i i did that and i i i sold a lot of the those tra more traditional style of work you know but at the same time uh as i as I developed, I, I remember going to the Smithsonian in New in uh, Washington at the National History Museum and looking at at least uh, thousands of uh, Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, Arapaho, and Cheyenne ledger drawings from that that specific time. The ones that were commissioned, the ones that were drawn freely for, for, by by men, mo majority were male. So it was a masculine art form. And so uh, what I did, uh, what I started noticing through my own work at the time is that it was dated to a time that, uh, I hate to say it, it was a good sale and it really had no uh, cultural um, identity towards my, my time on the planet. And I always said our time is just as important as any past uh, culture, you know, our culture right now is just as important as our our ancestors was. It was we're still fighting the same struggle basically may not be as bloody as it once was but we're still fighting that same struggle so i tr tried to make my art more journalistic into the and approach it from a way from our our view of the outside world uh i wasn't i tried to stop doing it for a a decorative sale. I try to do it for a, a contemporary living uh, native person struggling to try to get through this, uh, you know, the the fence that we have to walk on sometimes. Uh, and that's kind of uh, what I wanted to say, but I didn't want it to be angry. You know, I wanted it to say something without having a um, uh, a, a negative concept to it. I, I kind of wanted to not to polish it up to you know whitewash it or whatever, but I wanted it to say something about our time and the things that we seen from our perspective, not from the outside. And I thought that was a cultural uh, way of identifying without being a decoration. I really I I appreciate that a lot. I think. Um... Try, right, trying to balance that. How do we tell us our stories of present day, right, and and not like replicate some of these tropes that might be harmful, right, or reflect a certain time period that isn't, uh, isn't a reflection of of our today's world. And so, um, in clo in closing, I know we're we're coming up on the hour, and I just I really appreciate both of you for taking the time to talk about this internship. I hope it also inspires other young artists to reach out to like older artists, to the old guys. I'm just kidding, Chuck. Um, but to reach out to older artists and seek out mentorship. But in closing, um, maybe since Chuck, you just talked about present day, like what do you both think about for the future? Where you where do you hope native art goes, Lakota art goes for the future? Let you take that, Martha. Um, me? Yeah, you're the future. Uh, I'm the past. <laughs> you're still alive. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I feel like culture is a living thing. It's not a set thing. You can't put it in a box in a museum. So I feel like it'll always be changing with every individual person, every individual generation. Um, and I don't really know if I have any hopes for where it goes. Maybe if maybe to be more inclusive or you know, I don't know, hopeful. Like we all just like I don't know, grow together in our own ways. Yeah, I don't think putting it in a box will do anything for anybody. I would kind of like to see the future, not uh, our work being blended in with somebody that's a, a hobbyist. Uh, I mean, it should be in a separate room. If it's not made by a native, it should be in a separate room from a native's art. It shouldn't be blended into the same room. Uh, I, as far as displays goes for public viewing and everything and an understanding the law of how it's, uh, you know, how it's uh, marketed, by uh like white people generally. yeah by non-natives that decide that you know it's okay to have a bunch of paintings of chiefs but if they're not done by native people they should be in a separate room away from and not make, blended in with done by native artists and that's just an old qualm of mine and i hope in the future that it changes you know because i grew up and I've seen some awful stuff as a kid that stuck in my head. Some of it's still there that, uh, you know, from postcards that were so anti-Indian, but they were supposed to be humorous or something. And uh, it, nowadays, uh, you know, um, of course, that you know, we all live through our generation. So there's going to be things in the future that kids are going to see it from this time and they're going to blame the people, X generation, whatever, saying, why didn't you do something about that? You know, and uh, but native art is always going to be there. I mean, regardless if anybody's buying it, somebody's going to make some stuff. I know that. So I, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a future in native art. So. We Maybe. naturally uh, aspire to that. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a wonderful place to close and just thinking about um a right we're still up against these battles where non-native viewership or audiences or the people in positions of power are kind of convoluting some of our artistic practices and that we really should be centering native voices when we talk about native art. And so I really I just thank you both um, Duane and Martha for taking the time. I've been really uh, excited about your internship, Martha. I think hanging out with Chuck for all these months, I hope has um, given you some some good conversation and some humor. I feel like I always have uh, some good laughs when I'm chatting with and visiting with Duane. So um, thank you both. And I hope uh, to see more of your work, Martha. I am excited. I hope you enter some stuff in the in some art shows so we can uh, start to to collect your pieces as well. She's and, gonna be, she's gonna have some work at the Red Cloud Art Show this summer. Awesome. So I I look forward to that. And then Chuck, I look forward to your exhibition about the buffaloes on vacation. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> and uh, thank you all for joining us. And this, again, this will be posted um, to Racing Magpie's YouTube channel. And it'll also be available um, on Facebook as we stream through that platform. So thank you all. And I hope you have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.